This is Eyewitness News in High Definition with live breaking news. A local hospital catches fire. Hello, I'm David Ono. I'm Leslie Sykes, and for Ellen Laven, we begin with that breaking news live in Palmdale. Bill Thomas is live in Air 7 overhead with the latest. Bill. The LA County firefighters responded to a second alarm fire here at the new Antelope Valley Hospital, currently under construction. You see all the firefighters on the rooftop right now just working on the cleanup. They tell us officially this is a knockdown. The fire has been knocked down. This is Palmdale Boulevard at Elizabeth Lake Road in Palmdale here in the Antelope Valley. We're told the cause of the blaze, roofing materials had caught fire. You can see all the material on the rooftop here. Let's go to a still picture someone was kind enough to send over to us. Those materials apparently petroleum-based, and that caused a massive tower of black smoke. We understand that uh, smoke was visible from all over the entire Antelope Valley. Let's go back to our live shot now as you watch firefighters on the cleanup of the rooftop of the Antelope Valley Hospital, still under construction. This must have been quite a scare. Look at homeowners here on the south side of the hospital within about 50 yards. Fortunately, firefighters on that second alarm fire, they were able to contain the fire to that one building. Fire has been knocked down and no reports of any injuries. Reporting live from Air 7 HD over Palmdale, I'm Bill Thomas, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Bill, thank you for that report. We have breaking news in Rosemead, where deputies just caught a suspect who allegedly hit a female deputy with his SUV this morning. A five-block area and several schools were on lockdown as a search for that suspect all day. Eyewitness News reporter Carlos Grande is live at the scene in Rosemead with more. Carlos? Well, David, this came to an end, as you said, just moments ago when sheriff's investigators told us that they do have the suspect in custody. They found him at around 3.15, only 45 minutes ago. He was hiding in a garage on Klingerman Street, which is very close to where this event all began this morning. Now, they say it all started with, of all things, a fight over an iPod. When deputies arrived, they saw the suspect trying to leave. They say he hit this deputy in the leg with his vehicle, and that's when the shooting started. SWAT officers move in on the ground as helicopters search from the air. A day-long search that shut down several blocks near Walnut Grove Avenue. The call came in around 7.30 this morning as a person screaming. When deputies arrived, they saw someone in a vehicle trying to leave. They weren't sure if he was involved, so they tried to stop him. He was in a white Toyota 4Runner. He was leaving the location. Deputies attempted to stop him in, their inter in the interim of trying to stop him. He struck one of our deputies with his vehicle. That's when another deputy shot at the suspect's car. Two bullets hitting the windshield, but apparently missing the suspect. He abandoned his car a few blocks away at the corner of Angeles and Klingerman, right next to the Alhambra wash. He ran off and disappeared. Immediately, police set up a perimeter and brought in search teams. Residents are being kept out of the area. Sometimes there's um, gang shootings and there's like graffiti sometimes going around at that particular area. And today again, what happened? You, you were trying to drive in, what happened? Uh, they didn't let us go out. And then when I came back from after school, they didn't let us go in. And there are several schools here, including Roger Temple Intermediate and George Sanchez Elementary. They're both under lockdown. What, what we do is we notify the schools. Obviously, we ask them to keep all the kids inside, and we do go from door to door. We try to check each yard as we go and check any vehicles um, that are in the area, anybody coming out or in. We're obviously, we're not letting anyone into the area, but anyone coming out of the area, we check everybody as, as, as we go. And of course, all of that changed in just the last few minutes. As a matter of fact, sheriff's investigators say the students at those schools were all allowed to leave. Everyone has now gone. Meanwhile, the deputy was taken to an urgent care center. She is a uh, veteran of four years here at the Temple Station. They say she'll be okay. The suspect, meanwhile, is also in the hospital. They say he has an injury to his shoulder. They're not sure if that was because of the shooting or possibly if he was injured as he was trying to get away from the deputies. But they say he is now hospitalized. They're trying to figure out exactly how he was injured. Reporting live from Rosemead, I'm Carlos Granda, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Okay, Carlos, thanks very much for that. A deadly crash involving a fire truck en route to a call. The truck collides with another vehicle and that driver is killed. It happened at the corner of Wanda and Van Buren and Mira Loma. Investigators are now trying to determine who, if anyone, was to blame. Eyewitness News reporter Rob McMillan is live at the crash site. Rob. The CHP has wrapped up its on-scene investigation here, and as you can see, this busy intersection at Van Buren and Etiwanda is once again open. However, there are still a lot of questions following this fatal wreck, namely, who was at fault? The driver of the pickup truck or the driver of the fire engine? As you can see from the crumpled shell of this Dodge truck, it was no match for the enormous fire engine it collided with. The accident happened around 5 this morning. The fire engine was code 3, lights and sirens on the way to a traffic collision when it crashed into this Dodge truck here at the intersection of Van Buren and Etiwanda. 
Two firefighters were moderately injured, but they're going to be okay. However, the driver of the truck died in the crash. It's an unfortunate situation. It's unfortunate somebody lost their life here. You know, we never would want anybody to lose their life, firefighter or civilian. The question now, though, was the driver of the fire engine following proper procedures while speeding along? Even when driving code three with lights and sirens, Riverside County Fire says its policies call for fire engine operators to look both ways to make sure the intersection is clear before proceeding through. But did the driver remember to do that in this case? And what was the other driver doing? Did he do anything wrong? All questions CHP investigators are trying to answer. They say it could be a long time before determining who was at fault. That's unknown at this point. Everything, of course, is still under investigation. With the assistance of the mate team, we'll get it figured out. We're told the pickup truck driver who was killed was on his way to work here at the Horseshoe Lounge, just a couple of blocks away. All day, people gathered here, too distraught to speak on camera. They told us they had lost a very good friend. Through their struggle, many of them are probably asking the same questions as investigators, wondering how this happened and why. And hopefully you get a good idea from this camera angle about some of the visibility problems here. It's kind of a sunken intersection. There are hills on all four sides, and any vehicles approaching from the south or the east would have an especially hard time seeing each other until they're almost right into the intersection. It may be yet another factor investigators will look at following the crash. Reporting live in Mira Loma, I'm Rob McMillan, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Rob, thank you for that report. The L.A. City Council has approved a nearly $13 million settlement in the MacArthur Park May Day melee. The ACLU says it's the largest single settlement in a demonstration case in the country. The $12.85 million payout will settle claims for 297 demonstrators and bystanders who claim that they were beaten by police at the pro-immigration rally on May 1st, 2007. The payout is one of the final steps in the investigation of the melee. Police investigators recommended four officers be fired for their actions that day. Eleven others were suspended or received official reprimands. Responding to public outrage over corporate salaries, President Barack Obama today announced some tough new guidelines. ABC News reporter T.J. Winnick says corporate executives who want federal bailout money will have to limit their salaries, perks, and golden parachutes until after taxpayers get their money back. Amid the public outcry over billions of dollars in bonuses that were paid out to financial managers as the economy was crashing, President Obama today put Wall Street on notice. Top executives at firms receiving extraordinary help from U.S. taxpayers will have their compensation capped at $500,000. Companies receiving federal aid will also have to make public all the perks and luxuries given to senior executives and provide an explanation to the taxpayers and to shareholders as to why these expenses are justified. This is America. We don't disparage wealth. We don't begrudge anybody for achieving success. And we certainly believe that success should be rewarded. But what gets people upset, and rightfully so, are executives being rewarded for failure. The president was also busy holding meetings with centrist senators looking to cut billions in spending from the stimulus bill. It has been a battle cry for Republicans since the legislation was first proposed. Unfortunately, Democrats just keep throwing more money on top of an already incredibly bloated bill. But Mr. Obama insists the tax cuts Republicans continue to push for alone will not solve the problem. I reject those theories. And so did the American people when they went to the polls in November and voted resoundingly for change. As the president continues to try and gain Republican support for the stimulus, some in the GOP are already applauding the cap on executive compensation. House Minority Leader John Boehner called the move appropriate. T.J. Winnick, ABC News, Washington. In the meantime, there won't be any federal bailout for Hollywood. The Senate has removed $246 million in film industry tax breaks from the economic stimulus plan. Under the proposal, film projects started this year would have qualified for a 50% tax write-off. Senators pointed to January's more than $1 billion in movie ticket sales as proof the film industry doesn't need any federal help. The Motion Picture Association says economic troubles are hurting Hollywood, drying up financing for new projects and slowing DVD sales.
Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa is in Washington today asking the Obama administration for federal funding for transportation and green technology projects. Along with several other mayors, he also pressed for passage of the economic stimulus bill. It's time to stop bickering uh, and start uh, the tough uh, negotiating to get this bill out uh, to ensure that the American people and the people in our cities uh, get the relief that they need right now. The mayor is meeting with Valerie Jarrett, one of President Obama's top advisors. A helicopter was called in to find a brush fire on the Rincon Bluffs on the Ventura County coast today. The fire started at about 10 o'clock this morning at an oil field where a gas pipe ruptured. The fire spread to the brush and burned four acres northwest of the city of Ventura. The area is bordered by three highways which kept the fire from spreading. Oil crews shut down the leaking pipeline, and it didn't take long for fire parties to put the fire out. There are no reports of injuries. Well, it's looking good outside. We've got Dallas Rains for a first check of the weather. Dallas. Hi, Leslie. Good afternoon, everyone. We're looking at the Malibu cameras. Some high clouds starting to move in across Southern California. We're just kind of waiting on the rain to arrive, which will occur tomorrow afternoon. Right now, we're looking downtown. Sky is still mostly clear. Our temperature was warm again today. It's 76 degrees. Our winds have been kicking up, though, out of the east and south east today and that will happen again tonight and tomorrow next weather system just offshore we'll show you that on the satellite view and bring some rain and snow to southern california over the next couple of days forecast coming your way in just a minute david back to you thank you dallas All consumers right. now have four more months to prepare for the switch from analog to digital television today the house voted to postpone the shutdown of analog tv signals until june 12th to address concerns to many americans we're not ready for the original February 17th deadline set by Congress three years ago. The Senate passed the same measure last week, and President Obama has promised to sign it into law. For more information on the switch to digital broadcasting, just log on to our website, abc7.com. It sounds like something that would happen in a movie. A doctor walks to his car, and it explodes just as he goes to get in. And police are saying this was no accident. And this. Local city leaders hope to send a message to gang members why they did it with a wrecking crew today. Then the auto industry has been struggling in this recession, but some car makers are not, and they're even seeing sales increase. We'll explain. I'm Mark Brown. At five, new meaning to the term drug mule. $1.5 million worth of pot hidden in pottery. How local agents crack the case. Plus, want to know where your kid is? The new people tracker on the internet. Day at five on ABC7. Federal agents have searched the Boston area home of a man long associated with the 1982 Tylenol case that killed seven people. No one was ever charged with the deaths of those who took the cyanide laced drugs, but the FBI has just confirmed that agents searched the Cambridge home of James Lewis. Lewis served 12 years in prison for extortion after sending a note to Tylenol maker Johnson & Johnson demanding $1 million. The FBI won't say why the search was launched or if new evidence has surfaced, possibly linking Lewis to the poisonings. More shockwaves this afternoon from the nationwide salmonella outbreak linked to tainted peanut butter. Federal officials say the outbreak may have claimed at least eight lives and sickened more than 500 people since last September. Two months after becoming extremely ill, the mother of a Vermont seven-year-old says her son is still recovering. It was hell. My child was so painfully sick and his body hurt so bad he wanted to die. The salmonella outbreak has been linked to a peanut processing plant in Georgia. The company is now the focus of a criminal investigation to determine if it knowingly sold the contaminated product. Congress is also demanding answers and is calling for a new federal agency to handle food safety. Quite a story here. The man who blew the whistle on the Bernard Madoff case testified before Congress today. Harry Markopoulos says he spent years warning regulators about Madoff. He was especially critical of the security and Exchange Commission. I gift wrapped and delivered the largest Ponzi scheme in history to them and somehow they couldn't be bothered to conduct a thorough and proper investigation because they were too busy on matters of higher priority. If a 50 billion dollar Ponzi scheme doesn't make the SEC's priority list then I want to know who sets their priorities. 
The SEC has already been under fire for failing to stop Madoff, who is accused of running a massive pyramid scheme. Markopoulos, a former securities executive and fraud investigator, also testified that he feared for his life as a result of pursuing the Madoff investigation. Fans of Bruce Springsteen spark an investigation into Ticketmaster. People were unable to buy tickets to his concert from Ticketmaster's website and find out why it's because of an unusual message they got on the site. And you're taking a live look outside right now at LAX. Rain is on the way, and Dallas Rains is up next with your live Mega Doppler 7000 HD forecast. And an unusual gathering of more than 100 manatees. Find out why it's the weather that has them huddling together. Out of work, you can still make money. Tonight, you don't need a job to keep the cash coming in. It was really easy. From $20 to $2,500. Yeah, you, know, you can add that up. Eyewitness News reveals unusual ways to make money. Tonight at 11 on ABC7. Kind of a sad story here. This has become a yearly event in the waters of Riviera Beach, Florida. Dozens of manatees gathering near the local power plant. And the reason... The manatees are cold and the plant discharges warm water. Now, many of the warm natural springs in their coastal habitat have been wiped out, so they come here instead. The problem is the power plant is cutting back operations. In fact, the operator sometimes fires up the plant for the sole purpose of helping to keep the manatees warm. Wow. Uh, you know, well, manatees, they, they like that warm water. That's uh -huh. why we don't have any here in California. Right. It's way too cold. It is. Our water's freezing out there <laughs> in the California current. But uh, down in Florida, usually southern Florida, the water, uh, water temperatures stay at least in the mid-70s uh, during the course of the wintertime. All right, let's go outside. We've got some changes in the weather for you, friends and neighbors. Let's go out there and look at the live shot now up in the mountain areas. And the snow is still there, but it's starting to melt because it's been so warm across the area. But we should add some snow to the local mountain areas starting tomorrow night. And then again on Friday, 50 degrees at Big Bear Lake. Skies are clear. Winds have been gusting today out of the south and southeast. Downtown Los Angeles, some high clouds. But what another beautiful day it has been. 76 degrees now, mostly sunny skies. I mean, you can see the high cirrus clouds kind of on the leading edge of the weather system that's coming in for tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and into Friday. We've got a couple going. And a little bit warmer down in Orange County, boys. Some nice weather, gusty winds that I mentioned blowing out through the IE. These are winds coming up out of the southeast, kind of feeding into an area of low pressure which is offshore tonight, and it shows up beautifully on the satellite picture. The center of the first storm is right there. That's the low. Then there'll be another low pressure that will develop in the Gulf of Alaska. So we have two chances for rain. One starting tomorrow afternoon. Looks like this low here will approach the coastline sometime around lunchtime tomorrow. So maybe Ventura County could see some rain late morning around lunch and then making its way down into Southern California, down to LA, Riverside and Orange counties during the course of the late afternoon and tomorrow night. Then the next weather system comes down out of the Gulf of Alaska. Now this one will be colder because it has its origins over colder water and colder atmospheric conditions. So that one will drop the snow levels from about 7,500 feet tomorrow night in the local mountains all the way down to about 5,000 feet. So that should be a good bit of snow, anywhere between 6 and 10 inches of snow I am forecasting through early Saturday morning. Overnight lows tonight, generally a little bit warmer with those southeast breezes blowing across downtown L.A. 65, that's it tomorrow. So it looks like tomorrow will be the day when the temperatures will all cool off a good deal. 62 in San Bernardino tomorrow and 42 up at Big Bear Lake. All right, let's roll up the seven-day forecast and clouds increasing tonight. You may see a ray or two of sunshine early in the morning, but not much. Clouds by afternoon and a chance of rain. Rain tomorrow night and then backing off a little bit. And then Friday afternoon, it comes in again. This is the one coming down from the Gulf of Alaska. So look at the snow levels. It drops uh, way down to about 5,000, 5,500 feet. So due to the temperatures on Friday, we're going to go from our 80s today down to about 59 degrees. And then a very cool weekend is in store for all of us here with showers into Saturday morning and then clearing out, I think, a little bit on Sunday. But look at the afternoon highs. David, only about 61 on Saturday, lastly 62 on Sunday, then another slight chance of rain even on Monday. So pretty good bit of rain coming, maybe anywhere between a half and an inch and a half of rain total as we go into Saturday morning, which is all very, very needed. I'll have another forecast update for you a little bit later. See you then. Good news, Dallas. Thanks, Thank David. you.
In this uh, tight economy, the auto industry has been really struggling. But while many car makers are dealing with declining sales, find out how a few are beating the odds and seeing their sales increase right now. Then you know her from her Emmy-nominated role on Desperate Housewives. Well, now Terry Hatcher has a role in a new movie, and you may not recognize her. And there's plenty of services out there where you can rent DVDs or download movies, but find out which is the best way to get movies for your money. The big three U.S. automakers are struggling, but not everyone is in the same situation. For example, the Hyundai Motor Company is enjoying a sales boom. Hyundai is based in South Korea. Sales were up 14% in January. Hyundai is trying to make it very attractive. The company says if you buy a new car and you lose your job any time in the next year, they will let you return it. Subaru and Kia sales are also up thanks to low prices and other incentives. At the same time, big three auto sales were down 38 percent in January from the previous year. The federal trial against the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus began today in Washington, D.C. A former employee and several animal rights groups are suing the circus over its treatment of elephants. During opening statements today, both sides show dueling videos painting drastically different pictures of the lives of circus elephants. The animal rights groups say they will prove the elephants are physically and emotionally injured. The circus says the elephants are treated well and the activists want to destroy a beloved family tradition. A car bomb goes off, critically injuring the head of a state medical board. At first, it was believed to be a vehicle malfunction. Why police are now calling it a terrorist attack against the doctor. Then a local home falls to the wrecking crew. See why the city wanted to destroy this house. A significant change for the Emmy Awards. I'm George Pinocchio. Why it'll soon be harder for stars to take home a prize. Plus, recognize the voice. I don't have time for you right now. And you still have unpacking to do. Lots of unpacking. Desperate Housewives star Terry Hatcher takes a trip far from Wisteria Lane for a new animated adventure. Next. Tomorrow. We're officially on Storm Track. I'll have your live Mega Doppler 7000 HD forecast. Plus, working hard to make ends meet. We were running different ways all the time. How to keep the market meltdown from destroying your marriage. Tomorrow morning, 4.30 to 7 a.m. on Eyewitness News. Live from ABC7, Eyewitness News in High Definition continues. L.A. City officials say they will not put up with gang violence, so a notorious gang headquarters is reduced to rubble. Welcome back. I'm Leslie Sykes in for Ellen Leva. I'm David Ono. This is Eyewitness News at 430. Los Angeles City officials say gang members have been using that house in Glacelle Park for 20 years, but no more. This morning, police, city officials, and some heavy equipment rolled up to the house on the 3300 block of Drew Street and took it down. Eyewitness News reporter John Gregory says neighbors think it's long overdue. Piece by piece, the home at 3304 Drew Street comes crashing down, and many neighbors can't help but smile as it happens. This property has been a known hangout for the Avenue Street Gang for years. We lock our gate every night because we don't want nothing happening to our cars or anything like that. Scary way to live. Yeah, yeah, it is. After numerous police raids, the owners did try to sell the property. When that didn't work, the city stepped in. They attempted to sell it, but because of the gang-related activities that were going on here, and uh, it was very difficult for the property owner to try to sell it. The city filed a nuisance suit against the owners. They are hoping the demolition will force the gang members out once and for all. Make no mistake, we are committed to returning the Drew Astara neighborhood to its law-abiding residents and reclaiming it for the hard-working people who live here. And we're going to use every tool at our disposal to break the grip of this gang. Not everyone's so sure tearing down the house is the solution. Many fear the gang problem will simply find new turf to claim and the problems will go on for this neighborhood. It's not only here, it's everywhere, you know? I believe, uh, especially right now, the county, I think it's going to go even more, you know? And if the gangs and the drugs move, police insist they'll move too. And city officials insist they'll take down more homes too if they have to. In Glassell Park, John Gregory, ABC7 Eyewitness News. 
Who did it and why? That's what investigators in Arkansas are asking as they probe a powerful car bombing. The blast apparently targeted a family doctor, leaving him critically injured. It was an explosion that could be heard a mile away. So it was a bomb? It was a bomb. The white Lexus blew up in the driveway as Dr. Trent Pierce, chairman of the Arkansas State Medical Board, was leaving for work. And now police are trying to figure out if it was random or if the family physician was targeted. It was a device of some type of explosive device. We're not sure what it was at this point, but someone did put some explosive device on Dr. Pierce's car. That's what caused the explosion. Police officials in West Memphis, Arkansas, where the explosion occurred, say they don't know if the doctor was inside or out of his car when the device exploded, but he was close enough to be injured. He is now hospitalized in critical condition. Pierce had been due in Little Rock later today to attend a medical board meeting. The board oversees the practice of medicine in Arkansas and can discipline doctors for wrongdoing. Authorities say the meeting agenda includes at least seven doctors who previously faced discipline. Discipline. The medical board regulates more than 8,000 doctors. Officials are alerting other members of that board to use extra caution. Meanwhile, the Bureau of, Al Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms takes the lead on this investigation. Updating a story we've been following closely, the octuplets born last week in Bellflower continue to do well. Our witness news reporter Miriam Hernandez is live at the hospital with this late update on the babies and their mom. Miriam. Well, the Kaiser PR people tell us that something new has been added to the regime of care for the octuplets, and that is touch. The nursing staff is spending a lot more time giving some sort of tactile stimulation to the babies. They say it's very, very important for the baby's development. Of course, there is a very large staff here to do all that work for octuplets, but what happens when the babies go home? Today, we talked to the publicist of Nadia Suleiman about the prospects. Inside Kaiser Hospital, Nadia Suleiman ponders how to care for eight new babies and the business deals needed to pay expenses. Outside the facility, questions linger about the new mom's motives. It's like, well, are you having all these kids so that people could give you free things? Or are you having them because you really love kids? Give this young woman an opportunity to tell her side of the story, which I think will go a very long way toward making them appreciate what a really grounded, intelligent young woman she is. Yet negative sentiments may be putting major offers of help on hold. Suleiman, a single mom, conceived all 14 of her children through in vitro fertilization. Other multi-birth families received highly publicized donations. For the Chukwu octuplets in Houston, there was a free six-bedroom home and scores of volunteers. Suleiman's publicists, meantime, tell Eyewitness News that there have been some offers for help. I think that it's premature. I mean, we have some uh, approaches, if that's the right way to say it, from organizations that, that are willing to help. And we're very confident that that plus many individual people who have sent emails or phone calls saying that they would like to help. So I, I think that's going to work. However, there has been no announcement from any company about free diapers, baby food, or a family van. Many companies apparently waiting to hear more of Suleiman's story. I'm waiting to hear from her too, because I just would like to know what is she really thinking? Yeah. But there is no word yet on when Suleiman is going to make her first public appearance. As for the babies, they could be here for 12 more weeks. Reporting live from Bellflower, Miriam Hernandez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Miriam. Time now to check the roads. For that, we go to Sabina Mora in the Air Watch Traffic Center. Hello, Sabina. Hello, good afternoon. We're going to go live to our camera and a look at the five in both directions, north and southbound in La Mirada. That's right at Valley View. The, the traffic moving away from us is the southbound side. It is clogged up. State slow to the uh, 91. Northbound, lots of cars there, but not too bad. It will slow up, though, at uh, about Imperial and stay slow up into uh, East Los Angeles. A look at our second map and uh, the 91. Now we do have some slowing leaving Orange County from about Weir and your Belinda over to the 71. Looks like traffic opens up and then so again if you're headed all the way into Corona. The drive on the 57 in Brea, left hand side of your screen. A little bit of slowing because of an earlier incident northbound but southbound looks great. Leaving the 60 it stays clear to the 91 connector. For real time traffic any time of day visit our website abc7.com. I'm Sabina Mora, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you Sabina. In today's Hollywood wrap a desperate housewife 
life transformed, transforms into an animated mom. Plus, Elton John packs up his red piano. Entertainment guru George Pinocchio is here and begins with a new rule that will impact who we see at the Emmy Awards. Well, the competition's gonna get a little bit tougher from here on out. The 2009 Primetime Emmy Awards will be even more star-powered than usual. That's because the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences has expanded its nominations. The Academy's Board of Governors is changing up the rules this year, and that means the red carpet for the Emmy ceremony will get a little more crowded. In 10 primetime Emmy categories, the number of nominees is being raised from the traditional five to six. The categories getting the extra nod are best series, both comedy and drama, plus the lead and supporting acting categories. The Academy says the change is due to the amount of great television and individual work seen across the spectrum of today's TV universe. Past Emmy nominee Terry Hatcher has taken a little sidestep away from Desperate Housewives. She's moonlighting at the movies, and it's Terry times three. She's bringing three different voices to life in the new 3D animated adventure, Coraline. I don't have time for you right now, and you still have unpacking to do. Lots of unpacking. Terry Hatcher plays mom to Dakota Fanning's title role in Coraline. In the film, the adventurous little girl discovers a door in her house that's really an entryway to an alternate version of her life, where Hatcher hatches a different voice for this different mother. Everything had to be perfect because she had a goal. Nobody knew what the goal was up front, but everything had to be perfect. Mom, you're just in time for supper, dear. You're not my mother. My mother doesn't have b -b 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 buttons. Do you like them? I'm your other mother, silly. And before the movie is over, she'll transform one more time into a third character. Terry got her first glimpse at the movie one afternoon with her daughter, Emerson. Actually, I'll tell you a story. Uh, Emerson and I were seeing a movie in the theater just after school a couple months ago. And we're just both sitting there, and suddenly the stitching hands come up, and, and she goes, Mom, it's a trailer for Coraline. They say even the proudest spirit can be broken with love. And we watched the whole thing, and all the beautiful visual, everything crazy. And I just turned to her, and I go, it's good. Like, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm in something that I'm proud of, you know, that I really think is going to be, hold a standard for a long time. He is such a bright kid. Say something in Spanish. I'm bored. Be bored in Spanish. Terry's day job, of course, is on the hit TV what? series Desperate Housewives. When it comes to Coraline, you will watch this movie through Emerson's eyes. Yeah. It's true, and be very proud that I'm in it. Coraline is rated PG for thematic elements, scary images, some language, and suggestive humor. It's in theaters Friday. Desperate Housewives airs Sundays at 9, right here on ABC7. Fans moved by Jennifer Hudson's rendition of the Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl last Sunday can now download the song and help the singer's charity. After five years of sold-out shows, Elton John is leaving Las Vegas. Elton is packing up his red piano and closing his review at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace. The final curtain call is set for April 22nd. That will mark his 241st time taking the Vegas stage. Tickets for the final run of shows go on sale tomorrow. John's show alternates with fellow headliners Cher and Bette Midler. They are continuing their runs. Finally, Pop Music's most famous phone number is on sale in an eBay auction. And to everyone's surprise, especially the man who owns 8675309, the bidding is up past $400,000. The number was made famous by Tommy Two-Tone in his 1982 pop hit. This particular 8675309 has belonged to New Jersey DJ Spencer Potter for the past five years. So why is this bidding so high? The guy's DJ business goes with the number, a necessary provision to get around phone company rules against just selling phone numbers. Potter says he hoped the number would go for 50 grand, so it looks like it's life-changing for Mr. Potter. Excellent. <laughs> for him, at least. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. George. Thank you, George. He was boss at this year's Super Bowl halftime show. But find out why fans of Bruce Springsteen have prompted an investigation into Ticketmaster, why it's because of something that happened while they were trying to buy concert tickets. And it's something that is often mistaken for the common cold, but it's a contagious and very dangerous bug that mostly affects young children. What you can do to prevent it. 
Then at five, you could keep track of your kids, your friends, even your spouse. Wait until you see how a new feature on Google works at five o'clock. The economy has a dangerous effect on some cancer patients, even to the point where some may be avoiding expensive treatment. Health specialist Denise DeDore is here with that story and more. Denise. Yeah, this is kind of sad. The National Cancer Institute says more than a million cancer survivors are skipping necessary medical care because of the expense. And researchers add the numbers are probably even worse than that due to the current economic crisis. In a recent survey, scientists found 8% of adult cancer survivors are doing without general medical care, such as skimping on prescriptions, not going to the dentist, and not seeking mental health care when needed. The survey was done between 2003 and 2006, so they don't reflect the recent economic downturn. Are ADHD drugs addicting? A new survey finds that chronic exposure to them might cause changes in the brain. Researchers at Rockefeller University in New York tested ADHD drugs in mice. Exposures to high doses seem to change the reward center in the brains of mice, suggesting addiction. But experts say it would be premature to apply those conclusions to children because the doses used in the study were so high. We've had a mild flu season so far, but if the flu were to strike hard in Southern California, health officials say the most commonly used antiviral drug wouldn't help. The CDC says the dominant flu strain circulating in much of the country showed no resistance to Tamiflu. So government health officials are asking doctors to substitute with alternative antiviral drugs. But the flu vaccine appears to be helping. Two of the three flu viruses in this year's vaccine match the bugs going around. And just one more month left in flu season, but local hospitals report we are in the peak of another type of bug that often masquerades as the common cold. It's called RSV. It's very contagious and very dangerous to the youngest and the smallest. We may be in the home stretch for cold and flu season, but another type of bug notoriously sticks around Southern California for a few more months. RSV can be a potentially serious cold infection, especially in young children. A new Centers for Disease Control report finds respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is responsible for a great many hospitalizations, doctor visits, and trips to the ER for kids under five. It's a common cold virus. Lots of children get RSV, but it looks just like a cold. Family medicine expert Dr. Marilyn Johaney says there is no way for parents to tell the difference unless doctors test for it or the symptoms become very severe like wheezing and interrupted breathing. It can cause a kind of potentially damaging lung disease in very young infants if it takes hold. That's why government researchers are trying to document and monitor how many respiratory illnesses are caused by RSV. Researchers estimate 2.1 million kids contract RSV infections every year that are serious enough to require medical attention. But the vast majority are treated at their pediatrician's office and 3% are hospitalized. It's being tracked carefully in the hopes that more can be done in the future. But for now, experts say your best defense... Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, just like any cold virus. And kids hate to wash their hands, but experts say by age three, almost every child in the U.S. has experienced a minor RSV infection. Adults can get RSV as well, but it'll only feel like a mild cold. Want to know more about the signs and symptoms of RSV? Just go to our website, abc7.com, and click on the See It on TV link. And we've probably all had the RSV virus this season. We just didn't know. Oh, oh okay. okay. All right, thanks. Fans of Bruce Springsteen are prompting an investigation of Ticketmaster. Coming up, find out why it's because they couldn't get tickets to one of Springsteen's upcoming concerts. And you don't have to go to the video store anymore to rent a movie. From Netflix to Movies on Demand, you can order what you want. And we teamed up with Consumer Reports to find out which service is the best. I'm Mark Brown. At five, new meaning to the term drug mule. $1.5 million worth of pot hidden in pottery. How local agents cracked the case. Plus, want to know where your kid is? The new people tracker on the internet. Day at five on ABC7. A New Jersey congressman is calling for an investigation into the sale of Bruce Springsteen concert tickets. They take their Bruce pretty seriously in Jersey, and here's what happened. Seats went on sale through Ticketmaster Monday, but some fans got an error message while trying to buy them. However, they were able to click a link to Tickets Now, a reseller offering tickets way above face value. Tickets Now is owned by Ticketmaster. 
The New Jersey congressman wants the Justice Department to look into it. Ticketmaster says only a small number of people had problems and that it is trying to contact them to complete their transactions. Long gone are the days when renting a movie meant having to go to a store from Netflix to Movies on Demand. Today's services offer convenience and flexibility. We teamed up with Consumer Reports to find which service works the best. Two million Netflix movies arrive in mailboxes every day, including Peter Kaplan's. After we're done with it, we'll return it. There's no late fees at all. Now, movie rental giant Blockbuster is advertising a similar online service called Total Access. Both Netflix and Blockbuster Total Access give you the convenience of movies delivered right to your home. Except with Netflix, to get new movies you can only return by mail and wait. But with Blockbuster Total Access... Hey, I don't have to wait. You can also return movies at the store and exchange them for new ones. No extra charge. To find out which is better, Consumer Reports National Research Center surveyed more than 6,000 people. We asked readers to weigh in on price, convenience, selection and service. Also included in the survey, Redbox, a movie rental kiosk service you see in stores like supermarkets. You use a credit or debit card to rent a movie for a dollar a night. With Redbox, the selection is mainly limited to popular and mainstream movies. But in terms of price and convenience, our readers were very satisfied. When it comes to selection, Consumer Reports survey shows that both Netflix and Blockbuster Total Access shine with thousands of movie titles to choose from. Websites both offer several different plans at different prices, but Blockbuster Total Access tends to be more expensive. In the end, of all the rental options surveyed, Netflix came out on top for overall satisfaction. It couldn't be easier using Netflix. Lisa Leslie, one of the greatest women basketball players of all time, will retire after one more season. The 36-year-old made the announcement today. It's been a long ride, most of it right here in L.A. Leslie played for Morningside High School in Inglewood, went on to USC, and has spent the past 12 seasons with the L.A. Sparks, winning league MVP three times. She also helped lead the Sparks to a pair of titles and has won four Olympic gold medals. Leslie says she wants to spend more time with her family. Dallas Rains is here now with the last check of the weather. Hey, Dallas. Thank you so much, my dear. We're looking out toward the Malibu camera and the high clouds starting to thicken up across the area. It's been a beautiful day today with temperatures well into the 70s and even a few 80s, but things are about to change. Those high clouds, kind of the top and leading edge of a storm system that will move into Southern California during the afternoon tomorrow, giving us some rain. Now, the snow level is going to start out pretty high, probably 7,7500 feet. But by late tomorrow night and into Friday, those snow levels will drop down to five and 6,000 feet. So this should be a good snow producer for the local mountain areas. Looks like the rain will stay around even into Saturday morning and then perhaps clearing up for the weekend, most of the weekend anyway, for Sunday. And temperatures are going to be much, much cooler than we have had lately. Back to you guys. I'll have more at 5. All right, Dallas, thank you. And uh, here's a look at what else is coming up at 5 o'clock with Mark Brown. Okay, thanks a lot, David and Leslie. Ahead at 5 o'clock, find out what changes senators are making to the economic stimulus plan, plus President Barack Obama's call to cap executive salaries. Also, it was an all-day search for a man who hit a female deputy with his SUV, prompting other sheriff's deputies to open fire. Plus, a joint task force seizes more than a million dollars worth of marijuana stashed in ceramic donkeys. Talk about drug mules, and we'll tell you about the insurance fraud sting on local chiropractors. It's coming up on Eyewitness News at 5. Want to be one of the first to know when breaking news is happening? Sign up for ABC7 Eyewitness News breaking news alerts. Go to abc7.com and register today. Coming up on World News, President Obama clamps down on salaries paid top executives at firms getting taxpayer money. There's a radical new treatment for some forms of cancer the new technology that will let your friends and family find you anytime, anywhere. Happy reunion today for a service woman who recently returned from Iraq, not with her family, but with the dog she adopted during her last tour of duty. Joan Steets is a CB, part of the Navy's construction force. While in Iraq last year, she took the stray shepherd mix in, fed her, named her Seiko. Steets returned to the States in October, and now Seiko has joined her thanks to the SPCA. In just the past year, the group has reunited 79 cats and dogs from Iraq and Afghanistan with U.S. service personnel and has another 50 scheduled. Mm, that's a happy little dog. There's much more news to come. I would just use it five starts right now. Live from ABC7, Mark Brown, Michelle Tuzzi.
Dallas Rain's weather, and Rob Fukasaki Sports. Now, Southern California's first high-definition news. Eyewitness News at 5.